during the conference, some of us who are interested can put can, can get some of this work done concretely this week. Um, and I think we have a lot that we can do with GPG, um, and I'm hoping to um, hoping to figure out if there are any uh, concerns that we're missing and like get kind of a roadmap out of here. Um, I'm also on IRC right now uh, in DebConf dash uh, room three two seven. Uh, but hopefully we can get everyone to consolidate and use the Gabi chat and the Gabi page just so that uh, everyone can share the same screen. The Gabi screen is being, uh, is being uh, it's up on the screen here, so uh, if we can work there, that'd be good. I'm going to monitor IRC as well. Um, we have a microphone if you have comments. Yeah, so I'm DKG. You have to press short ones. It's not. Okay. It's not. No. Uh, I'm Eric Dorland. I'm the GNU PG2 maintainer. And um, we have Dees Kinkhorst on the on IRC right now. Who's currently? Oh, there we go. Welcome. He just joined on Gabi. I think he just installed Gabi. He's the main GPG1 maintainer right now. Right. So, um, bit of a uh, agenda uh, bashing here. So we got a bunch of different topics that people have put up. Um, so um, I'm up for just diving in. If anybody has any other particular topics, feel free to call them out or edit the Gabi document. Yeah? Um, I don't know how to do that here. Is that okay? Okay, yeah, we've got the path over there. Alrighty. Should we explain the current state of the world? Yeah. Uh, this, this came up at the at the um, uh, key ring mate discussion also. It was right. Uh, okay, I guess I'll explain. So um, obviously, you know, PGs have been in the archive for a long time. Um, there's currently two supported versions. The sort of existing um, uh, GNU PG 1.4 branch um, that is a very standalone tool. It doesn't really depend on uh, any libraries. It does its own crypto internally. Um, and there's the newer GNU PG 2 branch, newer in that it's been around for, uh, I don't know, five years now, maybe. <laughs> um, and it uh, is much more modular. Uh, it depends on, uh, on libgcrypt uh, to do its actual crypto. Um, it supports some other things that it supports like um, uh, uh, what is it, SMIME that GPG-1 doesn't support. Um, it's the thing that provides GNU PG agent. Um, but most, and it, so it's, a, it's more modular, but it's mostly compatible, forwards and backwards compatible with GPG v1. Yeah, uh, it's sort of bug for bug compatible maybe with the API. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, so this is actually kind of a confusing setup, I think, for many people in Debian who want to know just like what what GPG am I supposed to use, and the nuances and the differences between GPG and GPG two from the user's point of view, I think, um, tend to be very minimal. Um, and in practice, the fact that we have two, the upstream is supporting the 1.4 branch and the 2.0 branch, and working on the master branch, which is 2.1, which is not released yet, but has been in beta for I think at least five years. Literally, um, probably maybe, like four, but maybe four. Yeah. Uh, but it, but um, yeah. So there, so two point one is going to come up here. Uh, we've got that on the on the list. Um, so Fedora uses GPG two by default. Um, uh, the Windows GNU PG installer uses GNU PG two. I believe GNU PG one has been kept around by Upstream mainly because of the lack of modularity because the idea is that it should make it easier to deploy um, on systems that may or may not have dependency management uh, available. Um, and we actually have good dependency management, so I'm not so sure why we are sticking with GPG-1 as, um, as the default, um, except other than the fact that it's pretty scary to change a piece of software that's this critical to Debian that's as complicated as GPG is. Um, so, um, 
So one question is, what can we do to make it so that people can try a different thing as the default? If we want to consider the possibility of actually making a change to GPG-2 um, as a default, presumably that's going to need to happen in stages. Um, and maybe that means we need to make it easy for people to switch to GPG-2 and see what breaks. Perhaps we should uh, have a <coughs> Perhaps it would make sense to upload a transitional package to experimental that is packaged as GPG with all the binaries appropriately set that is incompatible with old GPG and the current GPG2 packages as a transition. And just that way it's a smooth upgrade path and you can try it in experimental and see what it would be like to have only one GPG. Okay, that's an interesting proposal. I, I hadn't thought, I feel like that's pretty radical actually. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I, we've got. I see alternatives up here as a as a the, the transition path that I was thinking of as being a little bit more, um, a little bit more chill, <laughs> where <laughs> if we we would need to upload a new version of new PG that installs itself as GPG one and sets up et Etsy alternatives where itself is the highest priority for user bin GPG, um, and then once that's in place, then you could say that new PG two could add its own um, Etsy alternatives option. Oh, sorry. I, I already on my systems and my systems at work routinely divert GPG, user bin GPG to user bin GPG1 and Excellent. then create a symlink called user bin GPG to user bin GPG2 and, and uh, I've done it for uh, over a year probably. You still have all your hair. That. It works absolutely fine, I can't even tell the difference. Okay. Um, so uh, alternatives would be nice to let me do that. Um, quicker and more easily on a new machine, but but a package that can do a divert instead would be also a perfectly acceptable solution. Mm -hmm. So one major issue with using alternatives for user bin GPG is that GPG is used programmatically really often. So uh, it would be unexpected if programs had to cope with potentially different versions of GPG on different systems if they didn't call it with an explicit version, especially since there are scripts using GPG that are not written for Debian. So, Same um, problem as GCC, for example, the reason we don't use alternatives for certain things, or Python, or similar. Sorry? Oh yeah. That's going to be real distracting. Let me turn that off. So, so mostly the, the command line interface is the same. There's probably a few tiny little corner cases where it's not, but basically you can run, whether it's GPG-1 or GPG-2, uh, if you assume, I mean, so gpg 2 actually adds a few more command line flags, obviously, but if, you were use, if you're expecting it to have worked with gpg 1 it should work just fine with gpg 2 I haven't seen any cases where it hasn't. Yeah, and you're saying that you've, you've done this diversion and none of the tools that you've used have broken it. And so I think Etsy Alternatives gives us an opportunity to say, hey, we're going to set it up, we're going to set the default to be GPG-1, those people who are interested can just update alternatives, and find out, I mean, and particularly, you know, you probably send mail to D, uh, DDA and say, hey, if you make heavy use, scripted use of GPG, or you think you might be making heavy scripted use, please try this out and let us know because we, you know, we want to consider changing the defaults. So I, I want to know if anybody is going to really object if we try to push for something like that. There, there's a bit of tooling built around GPG, like uh, Perl modules and uh, Python interfaces and so on. And it might be good to sort of, I don't know, file bugs or take special care to talk to those people before or as part of this sort of semi-transition thing you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. So. It's, tr it's a little bit tricky because GPG is, do, are people even declaring explicit dependencies on GPG? Isn't it, because uh, it's just going to be there? <laughs> um, well, I, I have a fairly extensive project that uses uh, the Python GNU PG interface. Um, so if the command line broke, because I, I, I believe that's how it uses, that under the hood it just calls GPG uh, command line. So if that command line interface broke, then my test cases would definitely 
let us know. Expose that. So okay, um, it might it be something I'd be wor I'd be willing to uh, experiment. You know, especially if we had alternatives, that would be really easy for me to, to test it out and run okay. the test case and see what happens. Great. So yeah, I mean, more generally, the impression I'm getting from what you're saying is it's supposed to be compatible. Um, and the only reason you think we might not want to just go forward is that there might be bugs in the compatibility. Uh, yeah, I think that's... Uh, yes, I think that's the case. Um, there are other, there's a couple of other concerns about things like Debian installer, which needs a bit of GPG. Um, and we, I guess, just need to figure out what those parts are. Is anyone from the DI team here? Or online on IRC? So. Um, so I'm just reading what. Uh, I mean, yeah, we don't. Okay. We don't. Again, we, we don't have to. Um, we can do this alternative without actually changing anything about the installer. So the installer can still have. Right. As v1 long as, as, long as you dev sh can ship GPG V and not GPG V1. Right. Exactly. Yeah, the, so the tool that, um, just for the context here, the, the install, there's, there's a separate package for this tool called GPGV, which um, is just a light, it's a lightweight binary that only does signature verification. Uh, it doesn't do any of the other GPG things. Um, so both GPG1 and GPG2 ship this, um, and there's a UDEP for it because it's needed by the installer to verify things like the apt signatures and things like that. Right. Yeah, so there's a comment online about, um, uh, about the sizes, uh, I believe that GNU PG itself is actually smaller. GNU PG two is actually smaller than GNU PG, but that's because it's it's got a lot more dependencies, and the dependencies are what make up the rest of it. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, it's I, I wouldn't say it's a lot more dependencies, but it's um, I mean the, the largest one is is libgcrypt. Um, it depends on libgpg error, um, which is I don't even actually don't know that much about libgpg. You were Lib, libgpg error is a is a is a Odd little package that just supports error handling across a wide variety of platforms in a in a common way, and there are a couple of other sort of portability layer things that it that it provides. And there's one other small library called libaswan, which is um, handles the protocol between GPG and GPG agent. And I think that we have gcrypt dependencies already in it that that are going to need to be on the system. So. I don't, think, I don't think pulling in gcrypt is particularly expensive size-wise. Yeah, I, don't, I think, yeah, my last examination of the situation was that gcrypt was already there. Maybe this is just my misconception, but I had the impression that GPG2 more or less requires you to use GPG agent. That's that, not the case. That's not the case. Okay. Uh, GPG 2.1 will require the use of the agent, I think. Okay. Uh, but I don't think that GPG 2 requires the use of the agent. I, I mean, I've seen people struggling with uh, things that used to do uh, direct uh, pin entry or passphrase entry and this sort of break. I mean, who knows where the bug is, right? But So that is a, a potential. Uh, point of friction, I guess. Yeah. It's a bit anecdotal, but that's just my impression. Yeah, just, uh, yeah, it does not require it. Um, but yes, 2.1 will require it. Uh, so I just went to my um, build SID um, churu. Um, unfortunately, I can't tell you how much space GNU PG1 takes, because I've already got it. Uh, but I asked Apt about G GNU PG2, and it suggests installing 183 megabytes of stuff, including font config and a Thai hyphenation library and an enormous pile of libraries. So we'll get to that. <laughs> Have you got recommendations so to turn it on? Of course. Yeah. So um, one of the things that um, <laughs> the current so the current version of GPG2. Uh, Will recommend, or I think depends. Direct, I can't remember if it's recommend or uh, straight depends on GNU PG agent, which depends on um, what's that tool called? The uh, key, yeah, pin uh, pin entry, and the default alternative for that is the GNOME version. So it, it will pull in a lot of GNOME things potentially. 
Uh, but we can discuss that problem uh, slightly down this list. So I'd just like to answer the question about um, recommends versus depends. If I ask without recommends, only 107 megabytes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, where were we? So it sounds like we need to look into that as that clean out. Yeah, I mean as a. Well, I think that's I think that's the defaults. Yeah, I think that's one of the, the yeah. second to last line there. Sorry, before you move on from that, um, do you know where libgpgme fits into any of this? Does it have the same interface between the two versions, or are we looking yeah, at yeah libgpgme? So for people who don't know how this stuff works, which is probably everyone, because uh, <laughs> I'm not. Yeah, it's. Uh, libgpgme is a library that's supposed to make it easy to use gpg from C and what it actually does is it forks a gpg process in the background and talks to it over a separate channel and gpgme itself is actually capable of picking a different gpg binary to work to work with so I think um, I think it actually should be fine with and, and not care So uh, I also have a tool that uh, uses Python and the GNU PG interface to uh, do things, which is shelling out or forking behind the scenes. And I'm wondering, you know, for those of us that want to do tools that reason about or talk about uh, key stores, what's the right way to do this going forward, especially if there might be alternative implementations of OpenPGP, Clint. Um, you know, what's the right way to think about doing this? Should we continue to do stuff directly or indirectly through command line wrappers, or is there, do we if risk? You're, if you're working with GPG, that's the only option at the moment. Um, okay. If Whether that's the right way to do key management might be a separate discussion than just how do we maintain GPG itself in Debian. Um, uh, yeah. Sorry, I, I, don't, I don't have. A, I don't think I have a good answer to that. I want to note. I that mean, we presumably they should be using GPG me if they can. If you're using GPG for your open PGP implementation, right? Yeah. That, I mean, that doesn't help with different ones, but it does help with. Yeah. Uh, so we are actually 20 minutes in, and I want to make sure that um, we okay. get to some of these other points. Um, it sounds to me like there is a people are okay with the idea of moving forward with the Etsy alternatives approach. Um, and maybe we can get some people to commit to volunteering to switch to GPG2 as the, as the default and see what, what breaks for them. Um, so I want to talk about how we deal with the maintenance um, in terms of package, uh, package GNU PG. Um, so, uh, and I don't know whether, we, whether that's like, I've got VCS religious wars up there sort of uh, facetiously, but. So um, I, I to explain the current situation, GNU PG2 is not actually part of the, under the umbrella right now, the package GNU PG Alioth project. Um, the reason for this, if I remember correctly, was a few years ago I sort of said, oh yeah, we should do that, and then they were like, sure, you should switch your Git repo to subversion and then put it as part of the project, and I immediately lost interest. Um, so <laughs> I'm perfectly happy to have this be team maintained, I just don't want to use subversion. Um, yeah, so that that was the sort of the, and that's how it got left, and I haven't sort of re-engaged re in this, but so Daniel's I, interested again, and yeah, I'm interested, and I also don't want to maintain things in Subversion if I can help it. Um, so, so I mean, I I think we should have a Git repo in for for GNU PG two, and if we don't want to move the GNU PG one stuff out of SVN, that's fine. We can keep it keep that that way, right. and just because you're part of the team doesn't mean you're going to have to be sucked into dealing with subversion if you don't want to be. Oh, so, so Taisa there says, I'm very open to changing VCS. Okay, excellent. So, so that's good. So do we have consensus then that we're, we're just going to move stuff to Git and it's going to be a gradual process? <laughs> move it, please. Excellent. Okay. All right. That's Done. Good. Awesome. Whew, I love this kind of religious wars. Um, <laughs> it's not less of a war, more of a... Yeah. <clears throat> Great. Um... So, uh, did you want to talk about cross building? Yeah. So we had so so cross building is an interesting thing that we've run into recently. Um, when I uploaded the new version of libgpg error, despite being a simple library that's designed for portability, it was actually not able to cross build properly. So cross building is creating a new 
creating Debian from one architecture for another one to sort of bootstrap a new, a new arch. And the reason that we want to be able to do this in Debian is because we'd like to be able to say that given one Debian archive on one functioning machine, we should be able to get back to a functioning Debian on all the other archives. Um, and so it's important to, to try to continue cross-building. Um, and at the moment, I think we've resolved the cross-building issues from the GPG error. But because GPG, at least some pieces of GPG, are close enough to core, in particular, I think the Gcrypt is close enough to the core of what we need in Debian, um, that's, that's like part of the basic thing that we need to get it started, um, to get the package, uh, to get the baseline Debian system started and booting. So that needs to be able to be built across platforms. I haven't, I don't think I've run into anything else there, um, but if people do run into cross-building problems, you know, we're kind of in the critical path, so it's worth being aware of that. Um, is anybody here doing cross-building? Of course. I'm assuming that was Helmet filing bugs for yes, his rebootstrap effort. So yeah, so Helmet is now running a thing that tries to rebootstrap Debian from scratch with a load of evil scripts because various things don't work at the moment, but it still means he notices when things break. Um, and I guess, uh, yeah, so the general requirement is that anything in the core system needs to be cross-buildable, um, as where we're trying to get to. Um, uh, I guess if GPG v2 has much larger dependencies, GPG 2 is not currently part of the strongly connected component, which is the core of stuff that's all loopily dependent on itself. Right. And until you've built that, you can't build most of the rest. But is GPG 1? GPG 1 is, okay. yes. Uh, so so as, as we think about making this transition, we may find ourselves in this spot. Exactly. As soon as you make it an important kind of thing, because like apt needs it or something, um, or uh, yeah, dpackage, well, I don't know, I'm not quite sure which of the core components requires GPG, but something does. It's certainly okay. probably apt. Um, then yeah, uh, that'll be. And if its dependencies are much fatter, uh, as discussed, that'll be a problem. Right. Uh, it'll make bootstrapping harder. So, the less, the fewer things it has to depend on, uh, the better. Okay. Thank you. So, if anyone would like to try to cross compile or uh, do this bootstrapping with GPG v2, that would be interesting. I don't think I have the expertise, but yeah. Yeah, there's, there's also another funky thing with the switch from GPG to GPG2, which is that uh, we need to cross-build GPG for Windows for the Debian installer. Yeah. <laughs> and so we might end up with problems cross-building GPG2. I know GPG1 works fine. I don't know about GPG2, but I'd be happy to help with that. OK, that, that is interesting. I had no, I had no idea. Um, it should. I mean, I, I, yeah. As, so the as current, current GPG for Win that's shipping is shipping GPG two. So I'd just like to say, you say you don't have the expertise for this. All you have to do when, when, if once cross compilers are in, and you can at the moment you just have to point an extra repo to get the stuff. Yeah. You literally type dpackage build package dash a architecture thing, right? So you just use dpackage build package with an D package extra build parameter. package dash a Windows. Uh, dash, uh, <laughs> uh, we haven't done it for Windows yet. He'd like to, um, but for the uh, normal, arch normal yeah. Linux architectures, uh, literally, it, it should be that simple. So uh, you should be able to try cross-building painlessly. Now, at the moment, you'll find things are broken, but um, it really is trivial. Great. Okay, that's good news. Um, any other points we want to raise about that? Those concerns? It's good that they're on the table, and I think we're we're going to run into problems as it goes forward. Um, but it's good to know like what we're looking for. At least. So, um, so I want to talk a bit about 2.1. The I've got it here as the eternal beta. Um, so, 2.1 offers some features that are uh, quite divergent from 1.4 and 2.0. So, in particular, it offers um, elliptic curve support. So this is a new kind of crypto that is, you know, does a similar thing to what uh, RSA and DSA do. Um, it, and it offers um, a new form of key storage called a key box, which is different from the way that GNUPG currently stores all of its public keys. And it... Is that for public or? I thought it was just for private. I think that the key box is supposed to be for public. Okay. I haven't tried the latest beta. Um, and it um, and and, the, and there's a, actually a radical change in the agent um, for OpenPGP. Currently, the SMIME agent behaves this way right now in, in the 2.0 agent. But OpenPGP, okay, 
here's how the GNU PG agent works. It's a passphrase cache. So you put your passphrase in it, and then GNU PG says, oh, there's an agent. Let me go ask the agent for the passphrase. I get the passphrase, I unlock the key, and I do whatever I want, all in the GNU PG process. The proper way to do a cryptographic agent is that the agent retains the cryptographic material itself, and then clients to the agent send a cryptographic request to the agent. The agent does the cryptographic operation and hands the response back to the client. So that the, so the client, which is probably much bigger and hairier than the agent, uh, never actually sees the key material in its memory at all. Um, so the, key, the secret key material is never exposed. The 2.1 agent actually is a proper cryptographic agent for OpenPGP. Um, and the way that secret keys are handled is very different. Um, so, yeah, the, the problem there being the uh, interoperability now with the 2.0 and the 1.4 is reduced in that when you first run the 2.1, it will convert the keys into this new format. And now you have the old keys and the new keys and the two different versions um, won't, that, yeah, we'll, we'll look at, won't, like they, if you change something about your private key in the new format, it will not be re retained in the old format. And, um, and also like if you start out with just the 2.1, you won't be able to run the older tools either. Right. So. Are people actually going to have to go backwards? I mean, it sounds like the new one should just replace it and we should just do it and we expect nearly everything to work, and if things are broken, we should just fix them. So the number of people who will need to make changes in the old style is small. Well, you're just worrying about the things that might possibly go wrong. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, maybe that's true. Downgrades are not supported, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so so I, what I want to do is I want to put the beta into experimental, um, and I want to do that before DevConf is up. And I want people to try, um, who are interested in using it, to try generating elliptic curve keys with it and see what happens to them. So with various transitions and possibly new recommendations for uh, handling interfaces to this stuff, do you think that Keybox will introduce any opportunity for at least the opportunity to make recommendations about how to handle uh, private key material? Um, I know people do it in a, a variety of different ways from it's just on their disk to it's in a EcryptFS file system to it's on Luke's to it's on a smart card. What do you think? I, I don't know. Does anyone else have any thoughts on that? Have people looked in it? That wasn't the, give me the mic, I have an answer. Yeah, I don't know. No. Um, there was a request in the keyring mate session for clearer, stronger suggestions about what to do in general, how to manage a GPG key ring. Um, and I, um, Debian has traditionally not been very good about making stronger recommendations. There's a web page that Rise Up hosts that's a sort of accumulation of OpenPGP best practices um, that many people, including myself, have been contributing to that tries to make concrete, specific, you should be doing these things suggestions. Um, I don't know if we want to try to endorse that as Debian. Um, or, or at least point people to it from the Debian wiki or maintainer's guide or something? It, it was pointed to in the key signing documentation. But, uh, on the previous subject about the interoperability of the, the, the key rings, it just seems like that's a, something that you put in a news entry in the package to warn people about that and then just go forward. Okay. I'm, I'm surprised that this is not upsetting people. Yeah, no, I'm, good I'm, news. I'm, I'm pretty happy about it. <laughs> um, this is sort of why I had been reluctant to actually package this so far, because I was worried. About, I didn't know how to deal with the, the change in the key format, but if people don't think it's much of a concern, all right. How hard would it be to write a tool that converts it back? I assume not that hard. Uh, so why don't you, are, you, are you willing to convert and try it out, and if it fails, figure out what it needs? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think such a tool exists yet in the in the two point one. But but it, seriously, I mean that's we, what we need. We need some we need we need some willing guinea pigs to to do that. 
Maybe they, I might be one of those guinea pigs. Presumably, if 2.1 can output an ASCII armored key, then, yeah, then you can just practically pipe it back into GPG-1. That's true. That's a good point. Although GPG-1 also has problems with um, merging secret keys. I don't remember exactly what they are, but I've definitely run into this before where you can't update your secret key properly if it wasn't done within GPG-1. I don't remember the details. Hmm. But anyway, it's worth, it, this is something that we probably need to do. Um, yeah, it's a good point that that sort of tooling would make this, would hopefully remove any lingering objections. Yeah. So, um, have we covered? Um, yeah, I mean, I guess the other thing that maybe we glossed over is that 2.1 will require the agent, right? That's the, the whole point of this is now the agent is no longer optional. It will be required. Um, it will, GPG should, uh, it will launch it if it is not launched, um, but it won't do, it won't fall back to the sort of, uh, the current 2.0 behavior, if the agent's not there, it just prompts you on the, as in the way V1 does it. Right. But that will no longer happen. Uh, <laughs> so if it launches this agent and I don't have an X display, what happens? It will ask you on the terminal. There's a look just like it did before. It will basically look just like it did before. There's a there's a there's a pin entry curses. Yeah. Um, and then I believe there are uh, there are other pin entries that people are, are putting around, including a pin entry for dumb terminals. Um, so I don't know just how far away from an from an X session your personal system is. But <laughs> so, so how does that integrate with Matt, which at the moment will do the passphrase query itself and then pass that appropriately to GPG and, and does that in its own curses environment and if you're going to try and spawn another curses thing around it then So I believe that pin entry curses actually it, I don't know exactly how much does it but I believe that pin entry curses um, takes control of your TTY stores what's there pops up its own dialog on top of that and then once you put it in it lets go of the TTY and, and, that, and the redraws it. will stay running until I manually kill it at some point? Well, this, I mean, uh, the passphrase is needed. I, I don't know what the duration of the, of the agent is. I mean, I, I'm, I, 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 oh. never expired, but you can set a default timeout. Yeah. As someone who handles all their email on a Kodo server, which doesn't have X, <coughs> is running stuff in screen and has multiple users, um, I don't particularly want extra processes sitting running around all the time whenever I'm going to use them very rarely. I agree with that, and, but, but this, is, this is part of the upstream architecture and we should, if, if we were going to push back on that, we need to make a clear proposal for how else it should be working. Yeah, I mean, you could, you could imagine a situation where if, if the agent isn't running persistently, it just starts up, asks, gets the, but, does the pin entry and then goes away, right? So yeah, maybe, maybe I don't actually, I haven't, I haven't read the, the agent um, man page in a while, but it may have like a lifetime. So maybe you could just set that to be zero, or one second. Sorry. I, on, on my recurring theme of I already did this, but I can't remember what I changed in the config to make it happen, when I ask my MUT to sign, it invokes pin entry GTK for me, but it falls back to curses if I'm in a shell session, um, it gets the stuff and goes back to MUT and MUT does its thing and it works absolutely fine. And if I don't have an agent running, it spawns one. Um, what, how long does that agent live? The default for me. Okay. Um, Which is we don't but know. I imagine <laughs> the, you, I, 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 uh, with more time, I will go back and review what I did to make it happen and write it up somewhere. Okay, excellent. Can you send a pointer to that to the package can you PG mate list when you get it up? Thanks. No, not for. Uh, sorry, I heard your question. Yeah, so you're asking it's if for key it's only for secret key operations. So if you're just doing verification, yeah, it doesn't. The agent doesn't need to be involved. So, um, do folks want to pick it? To, to, do you have another? I'm sorry, who put their hand? Uh, going to ask about. Uh, you mentioned the elliptical curve uh, changes in the cipher suite. Is is there a 
along with this change, which is a good one, is there any more generic uh, Cypher suite flexibility being built in to make this a little easier next time? Um, I think we have too much flexibility already. I'm not sure. I, I guess I'm not sure what you're what you're asking for. Um, it just seems a, a, a elliptical curve functionality in GPG has been a long time coming. And it has, but I don't yeah, think that has I to do with with, with, the, with the flexibility of of the protocols. I think it just has to do with the fact that nobody has, you know, leaned hard on GPG and pushed the changes in. And I, I actually think that one of the reasons that it's been in beta for four years is that we haven't put it in Debian and said, hey, look, there's some wide deployment things that people are right. using it. You know, I mean, there are bugs that's still in, in the non-beta versions of GPG that, you know, we find and they get fixed and it's still considered stable. Um, so I think us putting this into Debian would be a real push forward towards actually having functional elliptic curve support. I, I assume, Mika, that one of the things that you'd like to avoid is uh, us finding ourselves in a situation inadvertently where we end up with some default like dual EC, and DRPG, and uh, or uh, various other, you know, uh, openness all sorts of things. So I guess that means I'm signing up to do auto package tests. Auto package tests? Well, I mean, doesn't it? Yeah. It seems like we need to do something, some kind of continuous integration. So we check for the most, at least the most obvious things that can go wrong. I'm not sure I understood. What, what are you proposing? <laughs> well, you know, I, I, th I think that what, what we should do is, well, there's two things, really. Um, one is we should elaborate what flexibility there is so yeah. we know if there is a choice of, and I'm not really familiar with, with uh, OpenPGP, um, but if there is a choice of Cypher Suites, for example, you know, we don't want to find ourselves in a situation like with TLS where, you know, one of the options is no, or, you know, one of the options is uh, dually CD RPG. We kind of want to, like, not make that an option. Yeah, so, I mean, I feel like this is pointing a little bit towards this point I've written, I put up here about divergence from upstream defaults. Um, and I kind of wanted to get a sense of what people think about that. Did, Josh, did you want to, did you have another? Uh, yes. So we've had lots of specific guides about things like uh, use SHA-256 instead of SHA-1 and various other improve the defaults and similar. I'm kind of hoping GNU PG 2.1 would simply fix those defaults upstream. If, the, if those defaults are broken, let's fix them for everybody as opposed to just fixing them in Debian and breaking user expectations. I agree, but how many flame wars have you been in on GNUPG develop upstream? How many about flame wars have we been in Debian? Well, so so <laughs> so, so, so good at flame wars. So there so there are there are at least there are at least three regular requests on GNUPG develop from different people about changing the defaults, and there are these: change the default cipher suite, uh, the, the default cipher to AES. Change the default um, digest uh, algorithm to SHA two fifty six and change the default generated asymmetric key to be RSA larger than 2048, because currently the defaults are 2048. I believe the defaults right now are um, RSA 2048, uh, SHA1 for signatures and certifications, and uh, CAST5 or something for the, for the cipher. So the upstream has continually pushed back on all of those three things. And they're not doing it. Why? They, okay, so if you make a certification, an OpenPGP certification using SHA-256, then SHA-1 is the only required digest algorithm for an OpenPGP implementation. So in theory, someone who's using an OpenPGP implementation that only knows about SHA-1 can't interpret your signature. What implementations are there that have that? They are 12 years old. If you have a shot I, I, I'm on the other, I'm, I'm with you on this argument, and I'm, I'm just telling you what upstream says. If JPG can be in beta for five years, the 12 years not that much. So I think Lunar's hand is up for a while. 
Uh, is there any way GPG could provide both certifications, as in if you sign a key, provide the old and busted compatibility SHA-1 and the SHA-256 yes. cert yes. and make that the default for interoperability? Um, we have five minutes left, left, and yes, that's been proposed, but no one supplied patches upstream for it. So, so next year, DAPCONF is in Germany. Can we make sure we get Werner Koch to attend? <laughs> uh, that would be great. Yeah, we can ask him. <laughs> so, I mean, on the question of divergence from upstream defaults, uh, we should, we in Debian should always diverge from upstream default configuration in any package whenever we think the upstream default is wrong. And I don't see any difference here to any other occasion. Um, I was com frankly completely boggled to discover that there was a set of wiki instructions that told me to use weird different configuration for my GNU PG to use better ciphers that, you know, um, I thought, why is this not the default, at least in the Debian package, which we do control? I'm, I'm with you on that. And frankly, if someone only has a 12-year-old OpenPGP implementation, it's buggy as hell, and their system is not secure anyway. So I don't feel the need to interoperate with that. So unless people think that it's really a terrible thing for us to diverge from the upstream defaults on this, I'm leaning towards t diverging from the upstream defaults. What are the defaults for people who distribute GPG that are not upstream, uh, most notably other Linux distributions, GPG for Win, et cetera, and are they open to changing the defaults in concert with us? Uh, I don't know, but doing some outreach on that would be great. That's a good point. If, if we change the defaults uh, to, to be more secure in, uh, in our GPG, I mean, uh, GNU PG, most, uh, most uh, users are already long-time users and have a uh, .GNU PG in their homes, which may have wrong configurations. So we have to make, uh, make sure to push the thing, uh, the, the, uh, the, the notion, the, the, the knowledge where changing defaults so they are, uh, they do it as well when the defaults have been set already. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, some sort of tool that actually checks your configuration to make yeah. sure you're doing the right thing would be welcome, I think. I don't think anything like that exists. Yet. So and as far as key management goes, I mentioned this in Keyring Mate, but uh, uh, Hope and PGP Tools right. has, this, um, has this lint check. Which checks a key. But which, I, which looks at a key and says, is what you're publishing to the outside world look reasonable? Yeah. Which doesn't address what specifically is in your GPG. Sure, sure. Things, but, but yeah, maybe, maybe there's room. I don't know. Yeah. We're volunteering Clint for things, maybe. All right. Thanks, Clint. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, we should go, I guess, uh, yeah, we're running we out of time here. We are nearly out of time. Um, um, did you want to mention anything about uh, UK? I Sorry. Have a okay. Can can you yes. just announce uh, that so people who are interested will show up? I'm sorry. I still use Dukeki, and uh, and but I have a specific reason to do that. I I have my private key on my token, USB token, and I will have a talk on Thursday mornings. So please join me. Join us. Thanks. Um, we should talk, I guess, about the um, the package dependency thing. Yeah. So while we have enough, if we have enough time. So yeah. So as I was explaining, the one of the reasons that uh, GNU PG is a little more heavyweight is that it pulls in pin entry GTK2 as the default sort of alternative for pin entry, which can obviously, if you're on a if you're on a system that doesn't have GNOME installed already, it will pull in a bunch of stuff. Uh, that you may not want. Uh, the reason that this I made this choice a number of years ago is that it does provide a better experience to users on graphical desktop environments, right? Because um, if they're using GNUPG, they actually get a you know window in their face to enter their pin rather than um, rather than uh, something in curses. And for tools that are behind the scenes calling out to GNUPG, it can actually be better if there isn't actually a terminal right there to fall back to. Um, but I do recognize that this is maybe expensive. I'm not sure how to handle it better. Does anyone have any packaging recommendations for how to how to, how to figure like auto guess the right dependency? So this used to be an issue a long time ago with pin entry as well, 
And the obvious solution would be make the GNOME and similar desktop meta packages depend on the pin entry graphical programs. Hopefully there will be a pin entry GNOME shell at some point or it'll just be built in and have the default pin entry be the tiniest text-based prompting or whatever is built in. And then if you install a full desktop environment as part of your initial installation, it won't bother installing the alternative because it already has a secondary alternative. Sounds good. Yeah, it sounds like a reasonable suggestion. Does anyone have any problem with that? or do, Who do we need to talk to on the guy to make that happen? Because that means pushing the change there too, right? Yeah. Someone want to volunteer to? Although it's possible that some of their stuff already pulls us in anyway. It could be. Indirectly. Okay, so we'll, so we'll, we'll try um, moving the pin entry default to be there. Yeah. That's the only one I know that pulls in a lot of stuff. If there's anything else that people notice that I haven't noticed, uh, feel free to let us know on the, the Package GNU PG Maint list. And feel free to join Package GNU PG Maint. Yeah, if you're interested, oh, please, yeah. you know, we'll, it'll be in Git. We can accept patches, um, join the mailing list, and let's talk it over. Thanks. This was remarkably uncontentious. Uh, yeah. I appreciate everyone's uh, <laughs> bearing with it. Let's get this working. Yep. Uh, thank you.